Hello everybody, welcome to OCHD and welcome to another Jumputi Heroes news video. Today we're going to be talking about the Sket Dance Feature Festival, but there's also some other goodies I may have talked about in another video earlier. We're going to go just a little bit more into that. Um, starting off with the Sket Dance stuff though, of course, it's a, it's a six, is it a six unit event, seven unit event? Six units, um, which is not... Great, we have been seeing slightly lower numbers as <laughs> as time has gone on. It's less egregious than the Matsui Sensei event where it was like two series and between them they only got five. I thought that was particularly awful. But in this case, it's one series and it's got six units and some would argue that they have updated Himeko sprite, they have updated Switch's sprite, but it's just only in the context of Bossun as a unit. It's a bit different. Um, but, you know, it's it's not bad. The sprite looks good. All of them look good, really. So, I'm... I, I'm torn. I don't know. <laughs> but let's, let's talk about the actual content, shall we? Uh, we've got the reading time missions that sadly only give a guaranteed 5-star ticket, but nonetheless you should do them. Go to the missions. Click on the mission, click back, get your reward. The Skit Dance login bonus is pretty run of the mill. We get some rubies. We get 10 Skit Dance tickets in total. Uh, for those wondering, the Skit Dance tickets, they include the two new heroes. They include Bossun and Switch. But they also include a very small chance of getting uh, the four limiteds that include uh, Gintoki from Gintama. Um, which is certainly a choice. I mean, I guess this makes this ticket one of the better ones that you can get from the exchange, especially if you don't have these units. Um, before, like, Boba Bo was always one to go for because it had really good standard action units, but on top of that, it had limiteds included. And in this case, we got two new pretty decent standard action units, plus... Yes, there is Bossun, who's a little bit older. Uh, but we've got some limiteds in there as well. So if you're missing out any of those, potentially a chance for you to get them. It is quite a low chance, though. Um, then we have the Request Missions. Uh, these ones are pretty straightforward. Uh, there are five things you have to do. And if you do those five things, you will get all of the rewards. Um, one of them is the bingo which you have no control over really because it's a community thing uh which we'll talk about later but most likely that's just going to be clear no matter what um collecting these is just to do with clearing stages um the limited battles are only ultimate class difficulty i think most people should be able to beat them in theory though it is restricted to sket dance and gintama characters only uh, so newer players might actually struggle a little bit. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Um, unity battle, you're going to have to clear 10 times. There is a unity battle, which we'll talk about later. And you have to clear the Max Lock Special War campaign, which you should always do. And you do all of that, you get a 1,000 rubies and an emblem, which is not too shabby. Then we have the community bingo. As I mentioned before, this is all just kind of happening. A lot of these have already been cleared. Um, but yes... I suppose if you want, you can make an extra concerted effort to evolve some characters and to level up some characters and whatever, but these are all going to get cleared. You have to do all of these things as a community, and most of them are like all, already done, so <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Uh, but the rewards are pretty good. We get some Sket Dance tickets, we get uh, one of each jewel, we get some hero jewels as well. Limit Break Doors. Oh, there's more Skit Dance tickets here. And you actually get a Superstar Limited Choice Ticket Fragment, which is very good. And uh, 500 Rubies, which is very good. And there's these stamps, which if you like the stamps, there you go. <laughs> uh, and this is the event to collect the Antonies. Uh, you literally just play a stages. It's not even an event that is just any, well, pretty much any event. We'll give you some of these. You're going to get plenty of them over the course of the Feature Festival. Although it's not a very long one. It is only 10 days. But over the course of those 10 days, you will get plenty of these guys. 
and you can trade them in for rewards including rubies and jewels and tickets very very nice uh you can also get the emblem if you want it's really expensive but you know you can do it if you want um then we have the daily stage clear every day to get 50 rubies this is pretty much standard now you know once upon a time they dropped a set of kaiba daily stage that gave rubies every day and that was like revolutionary at the time that's how starved we were for rubies this is now a standard in every event so pretty happy that they are continuing to do this um then we have the point stage now Important to note, this is not a standard exchange points event. Uh, this is a missions-based one. You collect the lollipops in this case, and that will clear missions for you. We do sometimes have events like this, but they are much, much rarer than the like event exchange ones. So for those of you wondering, like, where do I trade these in? You don't. You you collect them. And that clears missions for you. And once you hit a certain point, you would have cleared all the missions. Um, and these can also be used to power up your characters. Um, I haven't actually tested it. I think it might be all five, but certainly these four, you can use to power up your characters. Um, which is nice, I, I guess, especially for newer players. Very, very nice. Um, and the rewards are pretty good. You're going to have to do a lot of farming, but just good luck to you, I guess. And uh, you can get the first new unit of this event, Momoka Kibitsu, um, as a free-to-play unit from this event. Obviously, as it's not an exchange, you just have to collect the copies from the missions and feed those in. Uh, so make sure you do that. And you can get an emblem at some point in the missions. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of boosted units. Um, everyone should be able to get at least the free like, event units from this event um by not by today tomorrow is either tomorrow or the day after you should be able to get all three of the event units and then use that for the rest of the event so you just have to get one more unit who's like half decent boost bossun you definitely will be able to get a copy of sketch for 50 percent so for a lot of people that's going to be it. it's going to be momoka and it's going to be these other two event units and then it's going to be sketch if you get if you decide to go in on the gacha you can get a higher boost but it's not that much higher so it's not too bad but yeah there's there's not a lot of boost it's here because there's not a lot of skip dance characters that's just that's just the way it is and then we have a traditional farming event not quite traditional but uh basically it seems this event is like one of the first we've had in a long time where they've completely moved away from the there is a points event and everything is in the points event store uh, because the standard collection event is missions and we actually have two closer to what we associate with the traditional events uh, where you farm the characters from their specific stage. Um, a lot of people prefer this, uh, myself included actually. I don't mind the points events, but it just gets to be ridiculous at a certain point. I think during that Kuroko event, there was like four or five points events running at various different uh, different points throughout the event. Uh, some related to it, some not related to it. The rewards are nice, don't get me wrong, but it's just it's a nightmare to go and farm them all. Most people can't be bothered. Um, but yes, we do have traditional closer to traditional farming stages which we did have in kuroko to be fair um it was a bit more of a mix there uh but this is uh this is good i like to see a slow transition back to where like characters are farmed on a stage related to them and and here we are we have sasuke subaki who is uh available now and uh you can get a chat stamp for clearing the highest stage costumes are still gone don't forget they did say once upon a time, uh, it wasn't that long ago, it was a few months ago, they did say they are considering whether they're going to re-implement costumes at some point, how they would go about that. Um, and since then, we haven't had any. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, they are planning it because a lot of people did enjoy that. But it, it slowly went from, like, they had these really cool, interesting costumes to... They only had aura costumes to 
occasionally you'd get an aura costume to no costumes. So, a bit of a shame, but I, I guess that's just the direction the game's gone in. At least we're getting characters, but we're not getting as many of those as we got before either, so... Whatever. But anyway, one thing that is nice is a lot of the stages that come out nowadays do give rubies. And this is another example of that. You do get rubies for clearing this stage. Uh, you have to clear the harder stage to get them, but it's worth it. Even if it's only 25, it's worth it. Um, so very nice. Then we have the second farmable stage, which is Sojiro Agata. And uh, same thing, has a harder difficulty to give some rubies. Doesn't give a stamp or like uh, any other bonus reward, but it's basically the same style of event. You farm the character on the lower difficulty and then on the higher difficulty you clear it and you get some rewards. So pretty good. Then we have the limited battles. Now, these all start at the same time, or at least it seems that way. I haven't confirmed that. Uh, but in terms of the news, it didn't say anything in the news about them starting on different days. And to be honest, it would make sense for them to not start on different days. Because in total, all of the limited battles will only be available from the 27th. So it's only three days. So you might as well make them all available at once as far as I'm concerned. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. Like I said, they're all ultimate class difficulty. You do need to get dancing Gintama units, which could be an issue for some. There are Gintama reprints on right now, though. So you should be able to flesh out your roster a bit if you don't have the Gintama units. Uh, it's just a case of whether those units are good enough for you to beat these events, which we don't know yet. But we shall see. I'm, I'm assuming they're not going to be too bad. Especially as there's no rubies tied to them. And they have this item which is one of the ones you need for that. The missions we talked about earlier. But I feel like they're not going to gatekeep that on difficult stages. Because it's actually important to the campaign. So um, sh shouldn't be too bad. Then we have the epilogue stage. Which very similar to the one we had in the last event. You clear it. It'll be very easy. It might just be like a... Is it just a cutscene, basically? And you will get some rubies and some other good stuff, which we're all about here. Um, then Unity Battle. Um, we had Unity Battle revamped somewhat recently, but then last event, no Unity Battle. Unity Battle is back. Um, I don't know if they've made any further changes to the way Unity Battle works, but um, we've been moving in a positive direction. With them trying to make Unity Battle more worth spending your time on and requiring less time in total. It's still a bit of a nightmare when they do like four in a row or whatever. If there's just one, I'm a lot more inclined to at least do a little bit, if not do all of it. So, happy about that. And with the amount of units that have been coming out, they've been making breezing through like the max point cap every run. A lot easier like there were loads of people doing like uh, a free unit run <laughs> on the last unity battle and it's like it's not even slow it's not even like you're missing out on anything it's like genuinely viable to do a free unit and when i say free unit i mean one unit in slot one uh, four unit run i should say then one unit in slot one and then free supports and then nothing in slot 2, slot 3, or slot 4. And it was working. I was doing it as well. It was working. So I don't know if they're going to make changes to account for that. I guess we'll see. It's, it's not too long from now. It's only like five days. So we'll see. Um, then we have the Max Luck Special Reward Campaign. Lots of rewards on this. This one, as I mentioned before, is important for that campaign earlier. To get those 1,000 rubies. You'll just get 100 rubies here. Uh, the rest of the rewards are... Okay, I guess, but just make sure to get your characters to max luck. Whenever rubies are a reward, it's definitely worth putting the effort in. Um, we have the skill cap increases for this event. The Togoro Brothers, Rao, uh, Muzan, and Kaido. Uh, most people will either have these three or should be able to access these three. They're available in limited choice tickets. They're available in the Superstar Gacha. They get reprinted all the time. Um... Togro Brothers, not so much, but the Togro Brothers will be coming back for Black Friday. People will have an opportunity to get them there. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so good luck to all the people that will be pulling for them because I know there will be a lot. Um, then we have the limited gacha for this event. We're coming out of Kuroko. They had no standard gacha. 
five limiteds. And we're going into skit then. Skit dance. One limited. <laughs> two standard catcher. This is much closer to how things normally are. But that's not to say that they won't do stuff like Kuroko again. I think that was more of a test. They didn't know how it was going to go. And I think it went pretty well. I know there were some complaints and I won't disagree with them. Because, like, it's crazy to expect... Like, if somebody's coming in as a fan of Kuroko, they're going to want the Kuroko units. So to expect them to, <laughs> to spend that much is crazy. Obviously, you're not supposed to get all of them. But if, if I'm joining the game for a series, I'm going to want all of them. And that's the problem. Uh, but while there were definitely some issues in that event, generally speaking, I think that was one of the better events we've had this year. One of the best events we've had this year. Uh, because... It just felt like something was happening every couple of days. And it didn't feel like too much of a slog to me. The only thing I had an issue with was the reprints. There were so many reprints that had stuff that you actually wanted. And it's like, I just wasn't willing to invest that much time in the game. I had the stamina barrels. I just, I just wasn't willing. Um, but mostly, I was very happy with it. And I think the five limiteds concept, a lot of people have speculated like, having multiple limiteds to that quantity for different series could be very cool there are so many series i can think of where it's like yeah just just drop like five limiteds that'd be that'd be great thank you very much um and i think it's good you know people would agree that having the whole generation of miracles all be limiteds it just makes sense and it worked and now we have all of them plus you know kuroko kuroko's technically Kuroko Kagami. He doesn't have a standalone one, but we'll let it off. We have all of them, so it's very nice. Uh, in this case, I think having Sketdan as a trio unit was something that we speculated a lot. It didn't happen. We got Bossun, but it's sort of a trio unit because the other two are very much present in his animations, in his win animation, in his ultimate attack. So it kind of feels like a trio unit. It's close. It's the closest thing we've got to one, I suppose. So it's a bit strange. <laughs> uh, also, there was uh, a thing on the roadmap that said we would be getting a new ability this month. And so far, we hadn't heard anything about it. There were no new icons in the files. A lot of people were speculating it might be Yo, but nobody knew what it was going to be. Turns out it is Bossun. And the new ability is Reversal Guard. If you're not familiar with Reversal, it's an ability that came out a long time ago. I think the first unit with Reversal was Giorno. But probably the most known unit with Reversal as of late is, is Night Guy or Crimson Beast Guy. Um, and Reversal is damage that is done proportional to the difference between your max HP and your current HP. So the lower your HP is, the higher your reversal damage is going to be. At maximum, it's going to—if your max health is essentially going to be zero damage. But the further your HP goes down, the higher that's going to go, depending on the percentage attached to it. Not that many units have it. It's really not that common an ability to be attached to a unit's ultimate attack. And truth be told, there aren't that many relevant units with it. To the point that we would need a unit that has an ability that helps you counter that. But we have one. It's Bossun. His his buddy skill um, gives, uh, I think, all team members a guard against reversal for two turns or something like that. I think it's 80%. So any units that were sort of viable because of their reversal damage, which is not that many... And especially in tower, it's, it's not really the way you want to go about things. But I suppose you can do it. Um, he, he stops that from being a viable strategy, really. I mean, I guess, you know, you could use them in a different slot or whatever. I, I don't know. But basically, new ability. Don't see that it has that much use right now. But you never know for the future. Um, and interestingly... Reversal Guard, the icon for it, the reason why no new icon was added is because it's been in the files for ages and just not used. And now it's finally being used. So that is rather strange. But we have it now and it's the first unit with it and I don't know why. 
but nonetheless, Boston, very cool. The sprite update, it doesn't look that different um, if you if you only glance at the old unit, but if you put them side by side, they look very different. So it's, it's very much a nice big upgrade for all three of them. It's a shame Switch doesn't get his uh, evolution to six star here. It's a shame that they don't get standalone units, but I think ultimately it's fine. It, it is fine. It's cool to see them all together in the limited and I'm very happy about it. And we've got the two standard gacha units, uh, Roman and Saya. And I think, yeah, I think that's a pretty nice little lineup. Pretty nice little gacha. And if you're a, if you're a skit dance fan, good for you. Go nuts. It's, it's a traditional uh, banner. So 10 multis to get boss in and you'll get uh, at least one of these units guaranteed on the way up. So pretty cool. I'm hoping you'll get lucky and get both, but... You know how these things go. <laughs> Would be nice if it had a choice ticket, but they don't They do not do that. They don't do that. Now, moving on to other news and links. Some of this stuff is live already. Um, as of me making the news post, it wasn't, but it is now. Uh, so I'll need to update that at some point. But this isn't. It is listed in the files. And we do know that this stage runs from Black Friday, midnight Black Friday, until the 13th of December. And this stage is the stage that Yo Asakura from Shaman King will be countering. So we know, or we can expect, that Yo will probably be around from midnight Black Friday up until the 13th of December as well. This stage gives 500 rubies, by the way, so I'm expecting it to be very difficult, but we shall see. Um... But yes, by the way, I've listed that as a Catastrophe class stage. It is not a Catastrophe class stage. It's It's got some custom name. It's like Super Challenging Ruin class or something like that. It will be a difficult stage. I have no doubt. Um, but yes, we've, talk, we've talked about Yo coming. Yo is coming and we now know most likely he will be coming Midnight Black Friday. But that's pretty cool. Um, we still haven't had any more information from the devs about this. Technically, hasn't been officially announced, which I think is a bit lame. Um, yes, they did show the teaser, but still at this point, it's it's Monday. <laughs> He's coming out on Friday. Technically, in Japan, it's Tuesday, <laughs> and it's coming out on Friday. So, it's a bit lame on their part. I can't lie. I don't know if... They will give us anything more than just announcing the banner, but I hope that they do. We don't have the confirmed steps for this banner, but we're assuming it's the same as seasonal banners tend to be, which is guaranteed random limited or featured limited on the 10th multi, and then on the 15th multi, you get a choice ticket. Um, sometimes with these banners, they'll have like 155 limiteds, but there'll be a smaller pool of featured limiteds, and it'll be like, yeah, there's like 155 you can get, but maybe there's like that that one here is like between 10 limits but we don't know anything like that yet we're just speculating uh it could very well be <laughs> the 10th multi gives you one of 155 limits which would suck because that's too many uh pool is too big but there are seasonal limits in here i assume there's seasonal standard gacha as well uh and you can see light and ryuk is there there's some recent limits like uh Prolo up there and uh, Nuro Koro Sensei down there. And obviously Togoro, as I mentioned before, making a return. Uh, but again, we don't have a lot confirmed for this. They haven't officially announced it and there's not a lot of information in the actual file. So this is just speculation. But I'm assuming anybody who has enough of 15 multis will be able to get Yo guaranteed if that's what they want. And it is what I want. But that's good. <laughs> then we have the True Limited Heroes Festival Gacha Black Edition. Now, important to note that this is listed as a True Limited Heroes Festival Gacha, which, if you're not familiar, is the name of these Gacha down here. And these Gacha always only have four units featured on them. Now, that's important to note because... This Gacha, and I haven't put the full image yet. I don't know why. I don't know where it's gone. But there was a full image. <laughs> and uh, the full image will show that this banner guaranteed has featured 
that Itachi, the Togoro brothers, um, Minato, and Tsunade. That is four units. So as far as we can speculate, because it's not officially announced, but most likely the format of the gacha goes like this, because we do know it does give a guaranteed limit on the seventh multi, and we do know that it gives a guaranteed five star on multis two, four, and six. Um, but whether there's any other steps or any other bonuses, we wouldn't know right now. But I think we can we can pretty safely assume it is the same format as those other gacha. In which case, this is pretty incredible value. Um, because these gacha have always been good. Because it's like, you can get a pretty recent limited for like, pretty cheap. If you don't have any of the units featured on the banner. That's what I always say. But at least do the first multi. And this is the same here. At least do the first multi because it's free. Um, but, if you don't have any of them, they're all seasonal. Normally it would cost you so much to get one of them guaranteed like 15 multi something like that you could potentially get one in seven you might get lucky and get more than that so it's kind of great value a lot of people are going to want to go for it but it is tricky say for example you really want the Turgro brothers you could go seven multis and you could get unlucky and not get them and then it's like you could go another seven multis i guess but it's like if you did this banner You'd get a guaranteed limited. You'd get a guaranteed limited choice. It's like, it's it's a bit tricky. It's like, because if you if you go for the choice, you could just choose Togoro. But you might be thinking, if you go for that, you're like, oh, I should really get Yo because he's the newer one. So it's a bit tough. I'm really hoping people, like, like, if you're a fan of the Togoro brothers and you don't have them, I hope you get lucky. In my case, they're the only unit on this banner I don't have. So I don't really see myself spending any more than... First multi, which is nothing. <laughs> nothing. I'll probably spend nothing on this banner. Just get a free multi. This banner, I'm certainly going all the way. And I'm excited uh, to see if they might give us some tasty rewards and stuff. Maybe some Black Friday missions. Maybe some Black Friday like tower campaign or something. Um, but so far, there's only one new unit attached to it. And that is Yo. And there is only one banner attached to it. Uh, one, I should say, stage attached to it. And that is the Togro Brothers stage. And there's a few sales packs, which we'll talk about in a second. So, I'm excited. I am excited. I think this is this month has been pretty good for Jampooty. And I'm really interested to see what next month holds. Uh, but, this gacha is live now. It seems like they're refreshing the tower gacha weekly now. So, every seven days, you can do a free multi on this one and on this one. The main line and the support gacha. So you should always be doing that. And if you are tempted to go further, to be honest, it's not a bad banner to go further on. Five multis to get a limited, ten multis to get a choice ticket, and these it normally has some pretty decent units on it. As you can see, some recent units and some strong units. So pretty good, but you should always do the free multi. Always, always, always. I always do my best to post it on Twitter and post it in the Discord whenever there is a new free multi, but just know that this does reset weekly. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and then we have the True Limited Heroes Festival Gacha. As I mentioned before, these all have a free multi, so you should do them. I do not recommend going further than the free multi unless you don't have any of the units on the banner and you would be happy getting any of them. In my case, Zoro is the only one I'm mi missing here, but that wouldn't be a good investment for me. On this banner, I think Ruki and Renji are the only ones I'm missing, so it's not a good way. It's not a good way to go. On this banner, it's just Kuzan. It's not, it's not good. It's not good. And on this banner, it's just Trunks and Vegeta. Actually, Yoroichi as well. But still, if you have even one of them, I don't recommend it. But if you have none of them and you'd be happy with any, absolutely good value. Totally good value. Um, then we have the Miracle Gacha Heroes Edition. There are the Miracle Gacha uh, Red, Green, Blue, and Yellow Editions, the limited ones available right now as well. The benefit of these gacha is not just the fact that they're 10% 5 star rate. And in the case of the other ones, it's guaranteed limit if you get a 5 star. It's the restricted pulls. And I think that's the only reason why this gacha isn't completely ridiculous. Because like the normal circumstances is like, why would I put on this? But I can just put on the other ones and get limits. But in the case of this one, in, in its defense, even though I don't think anyone should spend rubies on it. It has a very restricted pull includes a lot of 
recent limiteds, quite uh, not limiteds, recent hero grade units um, from like from this year, popular ones. So if you missed out on some of those, it might be tempting to go for it. But I highly recommend you do not spend rubies on this. I can see what they were going for. I don't recommend it. I 100% do not recommend it. And to be honest, at this point in the year, I mean, generally speaking, you shouldn't favor spending rubies on hero grade units over limiteds. But at this point in the year, absolutely not. Because we're going to get the pool update in the in January. and Or no, February probably. January, February time. And that is going to let you get all of these units on like free tickets and stuff. And then moving onwards from that, we'll get a choice ticket update later in the year. And it'll let you choose them. So it's absolutely not worth spending rubies on them. But I can kind of see what they were going for. The other ones, by the way, if you're a beginner... The uh, red, green, blue, yellow miracle gacha are very high value gacha. 500 rubies for a multi. 10% chance to get a 5 star. If you get a 5 star, it's guaranteed to be limited. And it's got a, a really restricted pool. So you can look at that pool and you can say, there's maybe like, I think there's like f between 4 and 8 units in there. Something like that. And you could say, if I have none of those, this is absolutely worth pulling on. But obviously, if you have one or two or three, it's, it's not worth it. But if you're a beginner, there's a good chance you don't have them. And so it probably is worth it. Um, don't go crazy on it, though. Because rubies are a limited resource. Then we have the tower improvement gacha. As always, I just do not recommend spending money on this. It's not worth it. You do get a limit on the second multi. But as far as I can recall, that limit has a very wide pool. You could get screwed over quite easily. I just, I just don't think it's worth it. Um, then we have this one as a guaranteed 5 star or well, guaranteed limited from 2023 on the 7th multi but it's a guaranteed 5 star every multi and that includes some 5 stars from like 2022 or later 2023 or later I would say that's not a massive selling point I would ignore the first like 6 multis I just ignore them the 7th multi gives you a guaranteed limit from 2023 or later that's not bad but seeing as it's going to cost you 7,000 rubies, you'd be better off pulling on one of these other gacha where... Like, like these are 7,000 rubies as well. And you know the pool is very restricted. So, uh, that's better for me. Then, we have the sales packs. Um, just going to quickly breeze through these. I don't want to waste your time. But awful. Awful. This one, awful. But, they have actually improved it. This used to be a random ticket. It's now a choice ticket. So before you you spend 6,400 yen and you get a random, normally like one of two or three or four hero grade units. In this case, there are two you get to choose. There is an improvement, but it's still just an awful pack. Uh, this pack is close to reasonable value. 500 rubies, you're guaranteed limited, and it is guaranteed to be one of the 16 featured on the true limited heroes gacha not including the black one obviously but the the red the green the blue the yellow um guaranteed to be one of those so it's actually pretty good value but again if you have any of them it's not worth it and if you have any of them if you sorry if you don't have any of them you probably wouldn't want to spend three thousand yen on a pack like this uh, but still it's it's close to reasonable value this is the same thing except it's tweaked slightly because we know that the black version of the True Limited Heroes Festival Gacha um, is going to have those four units I mentioned before. But this ticket, you can see Biakia is there. I assume that this is just going to have all of the seasonal units on it. Because Biakia is not featured. So, so having him on here, that's interesting to me. Um, 3,000 yen, you can get one of them guaranteed. Depends on the pool, obviously. But pretty much all of the seasonal units are at least pretty competent. If not, you could probably expect them to get buffed soon. Like, it's it's kind of not bad. But again, it depends. Like, if, if the details get released and it's got a bunch of other limits in it, absolutely not worth it. Uh, but potentially, not bad value. Potentially. Um, then we have this pack. I hate these packs. <laughs> I hate them. In this instance, it doesn't even tell us what the percentage chances of getting are limited. Yes, it does have, like, seasonal units on here. If this ticket is something along the lines of every unit is guaranteed to be a seasonal and then you have a chance to get limits in there of like, I'd say, you know, 10% because it'd be 10% per unit. So it'd be, 
you know, not not bad. Not not bad. Ten percent per unit means on average you might get a limit, but ultimately it's not going to be ten percent. It's going to be like three percent <laughs> chance to get a seasonal limit. It's probably not going to be all seasonal units in the five star slots, and I think the banner's is probably just bait, and it costs forty nine hundred yen. Probably not worth it. In most cases, not worth it. Uh, honestly, not worth it. Um, then we have this pack. It has no buy limit, but it's not very good. <laughs> it's 650 yen. You get 100 rubies. You get a five-star ticket that probably has one of the biggest pulls out of any five-star ticket in the entire game because it does include limits. It does include, include standard catches from 2023. Plus, it's going to include a bunch of other nonsense. Not worth it. Don't buy it. Um, then we have a bunch of packs. I had to put these in quotation marks because I hate it. I hate that they call these great value. I like that's what this little this little thing up here. Great value. No, they're just not. I'm sorry. They are improved value on the equivalent packs. To explain, you've got this pack here, the Black Friday pack. 100 rubies and a five star ticket. This is basically the same thing. 100 rubies and a five star ticket. It's the same price. But you also get some jewels and you also get an armor scroll. And as we go down, we don't have the full info on these banners. So it's kind of hard for me to say. But say for example, this one, if it's just one of each jewel, okay. But if, if it's like six of each jewel, which is not going to be. But at that point, people might start questioning, is that good value? My personal opinion, still no. Uh, jewels are quite plentiful nowadays. And until we get to the point where these packs are giving you like 100, it's like... Uh, I don't want to spend money. I don't want to spend money for jewels. Not really. It's all right as an additional bonus on a pack that was already good, but uh, not in this case, no. Um, generally, I don't think any of these packs are good. There are some that are of arguable value. In this case, you're getting a limited. Depends on the pool, of course. You get a limited 500 rubies and you get a golden jewel, which lets you max out a character's skills straight away. Uh... Max cap from 6 to 15. That's great. Um, for that price, it's like, it's arguable. But only because it's like, the ticket depends on the pool. Because if it's like, something stupid, like only 2023 20, limits, that is arguably very good value. But it's probably not going to be that. It's probably going to suck. So <laughs> I don't recommend it. Um, this pack is a hyper great value, but is it? For me, no. Um, same situation here. And any pack that uses hero jewels, get out of here. They're not even that useful. Get out of here. Um, and then this pack. This one, I would say, 2,000 rubies. You get a golden jewel, which, as I said, lets you max a character's max cap up to 15. Plus, you get some limit break doors and scrolls. Not that important. But this is a choice ticket. So 9,800 yen is a lot to spend. But say... You really wanted Zoro, you can get him guaranteed, and you can max him out to level 15, and you get 2,000 rubies. That is not the worst thing I, they have ever done. It's, it's somewhat respectable value. 9,800 yen is a lot of money, though. So only if you're the kind of person who already spends a lot of money on these games. Under normal circumstances, absolutely not. Um, this gacha is some sort of insidious evil. 20% uh, chance to get a Muso or a Densetsu. But that is per unit in the in the ticket. And it's a five unit ticket. Meaning, on average, on average, you could be getting one Muso or Densetsu per ticket. This has no buy limit. It's 9,800 yen, 2,000 rubies. And, you know, I was talking about this ticket. You get a choice of a limit. Well, this one gives you a chance to get Muso or Densetsu. And potentially... We don't know the situation with this ticket, but it could well be that all five units are guaranteed to be limited. And it could have a restricted point. It could be amazing. But will it be? I don't expect it to be. I don't know. I feel like if anything has no buy limit, it's got to be a scam. Um, but yeah, it's... Once we have the full info, I'd like to speak about it further. But for now, I'm going to say it's, it's evil. Don't spend money on it. And then this one... This one is also very evil. You could buy it five times. 12,800 yen. Yeah, you get 2,000 rubies. Yeah, you get the golden jewel. There's there's an element of value. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this five-star ticket, 
which we believe, again, same as this, we believe it's going to be just Limited and Muso and then Setsu in the five-star pool. So you get a 50-50 chance of getting a Limited or a Muso slash Densetsu. I think that's evil. <laughs> I think that's evil. I don't think they should sell pack. I mean, I guess at a certain point, it's like it's kind of on you, right? Like at a certain point, if someone offers something and it's quite, it's quite clearly a scam, <laughs> then it's kind, it's just on you, isn't it? Like if you bought it, that's on you. So I don't know. For me, I can't in good conscience recommend any of these packs unless you're like some sort of Omega Whale. In which case, this one is a choice. It lets you choose. It lets you choose the character. But some people, they'll see Muso, they'll see Densetsu, and their minds will just... They'll just lose control. 50% chance to get Muso or Densetsu. That's like a coin flip. I can't go wrong. No. Don't do this to yourself. Please, I'm begging you. Um, and then, that's about it for this. Uh, we know for a fact that basically every gacha we've talked about today... And every gacha that was still running from before um, are all going to be finished by the end of this month. The only gacha still running that we know about at the end of this month will be the rare gacha, which is always on. And, of course, this gacha here. Yo Asakura. So... It's very, very interesting. This gacha is going to run for the first two weeks of December. It's going to run into what we perceive to be the Jumputi Festa event. It seems like the Jumputi Festa event is going to be from November 30th until approximately the 17th of December, at which point we expect Christmas to take over. So Jumputi Festa is going to be a big event. Uh, we know it features Sakamoto Days, One Piece... Uh, My Hero Academia, Black Clover, and Hunter Hunter. But we don't know what those units look like. We don't know. I mean, uh, as I said, all those gacha are disappearing. That means um, all of the other like banners that feature like Muso, Densetsu, all that stuff, they're all gone. There will, there will actually be, for the first time in a long time, no Muso or Densetsu available in any way except maybe on one of those cancerous sales packs. Unless they've ended as well, which they very well could have done. Uh, so it'd be the first time in a long time. I do expect them to replace some of that stuff, obviously. But some some people may be led to speculate. Are we going to see a new Densetsu? Are we going to see a new Muso? Luffy's going to be gone. The banner that had uh, the tokens that let you get Goku will be gone. So that's another thing. Like If that's gone, it's like for people that were undecided on that and whether they wanted to go for the goku it's like are they going to introduce a new unit into that exchange are they going to introduce a new banner you can get those tokens on so that they could go for goku on a different banner i don't know but it's very interesting because we're so used to having all of these banners on and it's in particular i wouldn't say the normal circumstances is that suspicious but the fact that this sket dance ba banner Bear in mind, most banners, when they're added to the game, we expect them to last. Not all of them, but if it's in like a feature festival, we kind of expect it to last a month nowadays, or at least the duration of the event they are in and the next event. This Bossun one is going to end on the 30th. So that's sort of strange, right? He's only here for 10 days. All the Kuroko ones were here for much longer. Gear 5 was for much, much longer. So there's a lot of questions. And I'm not too sure what the answers are just yet, but I have a feeling that Jumputi Festa is going to be a massive event. Genuinely a massive event. I don't know if it's going to be massive in terms of the characters added, but I feel like it's going to be something where they're going to drop something big and they're going to hype it up. And hopefully they have some big announcements for us. Last year, Jump Festa, they announced Roboco being added, which was huge because it was a new series and it was a series that had come out since Jumputi had launched, it was the first series to be added to the game that had come out since Jumputi had launched. And that started something. We got a bunch of new series this year, including Sakamoto Days. And Sakamoto Days is now featuring in the Jumputi Festa event. So we're all hoping there's some huge announcements coming. But we don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. We haven't even got the dev notes from this month yet. That'll probably be 
in the next week or so. So I guess we look forward to that. I look forward to doing my summons on Thursday, Friday. You can look forward to that video. Uh, but until then, I guess I'll see all you guys next time.